we start our session. As usual, we sit in a comfortable posture and then focus our mind on the present moment. As I said, present moment is not empty moment. It is filled with uh, many, many activities, but we cannot notice all of them at once. One object we can focus our mind on at one time. That is simple breath. And first of all, we must uh, come back to our breathing. And with the inhaling and exhaling, we want to we want to develop our uh, friendly metta thought towards all living beings, especially in this very critical moment in the world. So many people are infected by this uh, nasty COVID-19 and it is spreading very quickly in some areas and uh, overall the whole world is affected. We can feel their pain, their stress, grief, sorrow, lamentation and despair. We can feel and we must uh, try our best to cultivate metta for them, for their well-being, happiness, particularly to overcome their pain and suffering, their afflictions. We want to <clears throat> be with them, let our heart go to them, and we want them to be peaceful, happy, and return to normal, healthy life. This, we don't have to <clears throat> wait. Every time, every moment we uh, practice metta, uh, we all want to wish all these beings to be happy and peaceful in all ten directions. Uh, so, with this brief message of metta thought, it's a very wonderful big subject and we don't want to go into theories, but we have to fill our minds with this wonderful, wholesome, unlimited, boundless thought. It is called illimitable. Appamanya in Pali. Appamanya means immeasurable. The, the metta that we cultivate is, cannot be measured by any means. That kind of metta we have to cultivate in our heart, wishing all these beings to be free from afflictions. Secondly, we must understand all this are not going to last forever. They all have their limit. They all arise no matter how strongly and they all gradually wear out and disappear. That is the very nature of everything. This is what is called the Dhamma, established Dhamma, law of Dhamma and uh, uh, the steady dhamma, dhamma niyama, dhamma titi, uh, or, or the, the other words Buddha use, uh, and to to describe this state. So uh, this nature exists all the time in the universe. And therefore, this very difficult time will naturally 
crash and disappear. And we hope it to disappear as quickly as possible and uh, wipe out from this world. And then we, this is our thought of uh, or understanding of uh, impermanence. And thirdly, we want to develop this thought of impermanence by focusing our mind on something impermanent that we can feel. Although everything is impermanent, we don't notice all of them without any great effort. Without much effort, we can notice the change in our breathing. It comes and goes all the time, changing and changing and changing. And then that put us on the awareness of uh, universal nature. That means no, nothing in the whole universe, past, present, future, long, short, large, small, up or down, anywhere. We cannot find anything exempt from this law. That is law of change or law of impermanence. And this, when we see this, our mind settle down and we won't be too much emotional, uh, but we see this reality. Mind settles down, becomes equanimous, and then gain concentration. Expecting this to happen, we start paying total attention to our breathing without verbalizing, conceptualizing, or without any doubt or confusion to see how things change. With these few words of uh, instructions, I like to stop and let us practice, which is the most important of everything else. Practicing, practicing, practicing. So let us do that. And then after uh, these 30 minutes, I can answer your question. But while you are meditating, don't think of questions. Let the mind become free from any thought, any imagination, fantasies, and planning, and so on, without thinking of the past, future, or present. Just focus your mind on these changes, which is not a word, which is an event, an action, a flux, all the time taking place.
concentration without wisdom, no wisdom without concentration. One who has both wisdom and concentration is close to peace and emancipation. Okay. If you have any question, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'll be happy to answer them now. Um, I think we sort of, uh, we had a technical glitch just at the end of the meditation. If you can hear us, can you give us a thumbs up? No. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, Barry, uh, we lost your question. And if you could type it again or, or ask it, I'm sure Bhante G would be happy to answer. <laughs> Yeah, hi. Um, so my question was, can can you gain insight knowledge if you do not have access concentration? Can we get uh, insight knowledge what? Um, if you do not have access concentration or sufficient i mean do you need a certain amount of concentration before that happens you gain excess concentration i think she's asking bhante if if you can gain panya wisdom without reaching certain jhanas oh yes yes uh your question was not clear to me he had he clarified it and made it clear to me. Yes, you can gain uh, uh, insight without uh, uh, gaining jhana. And that is, very, that is the power of uh, mindfulness. Uh, however, when you gain uh, uh, insight, uh, you gain that insight, even attaining the uh, state of uh, enlightenment called stream entry. Uh, you have to have a good concentration. It, it may have a, a jhani quality. For instance, we hear Vendable Kondanya was listening to the first sermon like other four ascetics and he was paying total attention to every word that Buddha uttered and he saw whatever is subject to arising is subject to passing away that is what he said Yang kinchi samude dhammam, sabbang tang nirodha dhammam. Whatever is of the nature of arising also has the nature of passing away. How did he get that insight? Because he was paying mindful attention and within his own mind and body, he saw rising and falling. When he gained that insight, at that moment, his concentration is very sharp and clear. There are many such uh, incidents, Venerable Sariputta, Mughalana, many people, lay peace, even some lay people, attain even the stream entry without attaining jhana. What happened was, when they were listening to the Dhamma very attentively, their hindrances subsided. Vini, it is called Vini Varna Chitta. Ni Varna Chitta, Vini Varna. Vini Varna means the, without hindrances. Ni Varna is hindrances. So the mind becomes free from hindrances 
at the time they pay total undivided attention because they are full of joy, happiness, and then hindrances faded away. When you gain jhana also, the prerequisites of gaining jhana is to overcome hindrances. But here, by listening to Dhamma, you can overcome your hindrances without having attained jhanas. And therefore, these are very good evidence for us to believe and trust the Buddha's teaching and trust that we can, can gain insight, even attain the stream entry without practicing jhana. Jhana practice and attaining enlightenment is uh, also uh, very wonderful. When you practice jhana and attain enlightenment, you have an additional qualification. Like when you take a, a degree, uh, you may be in honor list. You don't do anything special, but you do everything everybody else does. But you do it better, and therefore you gain, you become president's uh, honor list or principal's honor list, and so forth. Similarly, if you do something, if you practice jhana, that is something additional. Uh, but you have to have a concentration, deep concentration where hindrances do not enter your mind, do not trouble you. Yes. Um, Bhante, there's a question here from Vetri or Vitri. Uh -huh. Thank you, Bhante, for offering these meditation sessions. In the Kanda Parita, there is a passage. Apamo Buddha, Apamo, Apamano Dhamo, Apamano da Sango. In what sense are the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha said to be Apama? Apamana. Ap Ap Apamana. Apamana. Thank you, Bhante. Yes, very good. Uh, Apamano Buddha, Apamano Dhamma, Apamano Sango. Pamana Vantani, Siddhin Sapani, Ahivichika, Satapati, Unna Nabi, Musika, Katame, Raka, and so forth. You, you find the, this verse in that Kanda Paritta. Appamano Buddha means Buddha's vision, Buddha's domain, Buddha's shield is immeasurable. There is no limit to the Buddha's compassion, Buddha's metta, and there is no limit to Buddha's knowledge. And therefore, Buddha is Appamana. Sangha also is, Dhamma also is like that. Dhamma has no limit, it is universal. So long as things exist, Dhamma exists. So long as the universe exists, Dhamma exists. And therefore, there is no limit to Dhamma. Similarly, those who follow the Buddha's teaching, follow the Dhamma and the Buddha, attain enlightenment, they are called Arahants. Arahants are very, very much like the Buddha. They all are free from all defilements. In fact, Arahants are called Arahant, and Buddha also is called Arahant. When we pay respect to the Buddha, Itipi so bhagava arahang samma sambuddha. And those who attain enlightenment also call arahang. And Buddha himself mentioned it in uh, uh, Dakinavi Bhanga Sutta uh, when uh, Mahaprajapati came and tried to offer a piece of clothes to the Buddha. Buddha said, I also belong to the Sangha. That means I am Arahant, they are Arahant. And therefore they also are, their compassion, their wisdom, their understanding Dhamma also is illimitable. Therefore these three, Appamano Buddha, Appamano Dhammu, Appamano Sangho, 
Pamanuvantani sitting sapani. All other beings have limit. Pamanuvantani sitting sapani. All other beings have limitations. But the Buddha Dhamma Sangha don't have any limitations. That is what it means. <coughs> What is the first question there? The first question can was... I uh, gain, can I gain insight? Prashant was um, uh, copying Barry's question because we lost it when we had the technical glitch. Does anyone else have any uh, questions for Bhante tonight? I'm going to be Bhante. Um, Bhante? Yes? Um, can you explain in uh, the samadhi and uh, uh, sati a little bit um, i always have this idea on this the what i learned arya ashtangika marga sama sati sama samadhi uh -huh. is there a small transition from sati to samadhi or is it is it okay to think like attention and concentration or can you please clarify sad there one sad okay uh, in, you want to know Samadhi and Panya, or say it again? Uh, clarify the Sati and Samadhi. Sati and Samadhi, yes. Sama yes. Sati and Sama Samadhi. Samadhi, very good, very good. Thank you, Bhante. Yes, Sama Sati is the seventh step of the Noble Eightfold Path. Sama Samadhi is the last step. Mm. Sama Sati is mindfulness, Samma Samadhi is concentration. Samma Sati is, uh, Sati is sort of compressed word. When we decompress it, Samma Sati means mindfulness of the body, mindfulness of feeling, mindfulness of the mind, and mindfulness of Dhamma. These four together is called Samma Sati, mindfulness. Sama Samadhi is uh, concentration. It also is, when it's compressed, it's called Samadhi. When we decompress it, you have first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana. So these four jhanas put together is called Sama Samadhi. And therefore, Samma Samadhi is the, uh, what do you call, crown or icing of the cake, so to say. Uh, everything else is building up gradually to reach Samma Samadhi with first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana. I also want to mention jhana has two categories. Mundane jhanas and supramundane jhanas. Here, supramundane jhanas should be understood because supramundane jhanas are the jhanas that uh, arouse our insight to attain liberation. Sotapanna, Sakadagami, Anagami, Anarad. And therefore, they are called supramundane jhanas. Uh, they are described in suttas in various ways, but I want to make it uh, short uh, for to have more time for more questions. Thank you for asking this very important technical question. Thank you. And the third question. Uh, That's not a question, it's appreciation. Uh, it says, I am very grateful that Bhante is offering these web broadcasts. Thank you. Be well, happy, and peaceful, and stay safe. Oh, I wish that the same thing to everybody. And uh, any other question? Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, 
Pranthi, can you please um, explain to us about the the difference between um, metta and karuna? Ah, um, right. Those metta. Uh, without knowing anybody, but knowing that they are living beings. We even don't have to know them in person, uh, their name and so on. We all know that there are living beings all over the world. And we wish them to be peaceful and happy. In brief, that is what we call metta. Karuna or compassion is when we see suffering being, then we wish them to be free from suffering. We have to see beings suffering and we want to wish them to be free from suffering. For instance, now through media, all kind of social media, we see even at least pictures of people who are suffering because it is uh, COVID-19. And that is our object. And seeing them, we cultivate our compassion. We seeing them, we cultivate our metta. Seeing suffering beings when we cultivate good thought, wholesome thought, wishing them to be free from suffering, that is karuna or compassion. In other words, compassion arises when you see suffering persons or suffering beings. Metta arises without seeing suffering beings. This is the difference. Metta arises without seeing but knowing that there are living beings, they may not necessarily be suffering as we have, we see now in, as uh, COVID-19 victims. But also suffering is all over the world, all the time, whether they have, they are sick or not. But the suffering, old age is suffering, sickness is suffering, separation from loved ones is suffering, not to get what one wants is suffering and so on. There is such universal suffering. And we wish them to be peaceful and happy, free from suffering. That is metta. But karuna is when we see or hear suffering beings, our heart melts and wish them to be free from suffering. That is called compassion. Okay. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Good time. Okay, then. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm very happy I can see some familiar faces. And uh, uh, I wish all of you good night. And tomorrow morning, at 10 o'clock, we will have this session again. Good night. Good night, Pante. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. 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 Karen, I didn't see Karen here. I didn't either.